You already know Mario. I'm not gonna explain him. I'm not gonna explain Mario to you. But a lot of people don't know about a little Mario community that thrives in the depths of the deep, dark Mario crevices. I'm talking about Mario Kaizo. Mm -hmm. Mario Kaizo is basically fan-made high-difficulty Mario. People will take base games like Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World and rearrange the levels to look like this. As you can see, a little more tricky than normal. I've been casually watching Mario Maker and Mario Kaizo content for a few years. I just think it's fun to watch while I'm eating cereal in the morning. And then one day I just stood up and was like, I want to do it. My favorite Mario content creator is Ryukar, so I DM'd him asking if he had any Kaizo recommendations that are, you know, beginner friendly. I mean, I'm naturally gifted at video games, but at, it's, it's, it's Mario Kaizo. I need a beginner little baby card over here. Cut me some slack, all right? Ryu asks if I've played any Kaizo hacks before, and I'd say no. And then he asks if I've ever played any Kaizo levels in Mario Maker before, and I'd say no. And then he asks if I've ever at least done a shell jump before, and I go, I've played Hollow Knight, and he goes, I don't think that can help you here. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. After a few more messages, Ryu generously offers to train me for Kaizo before I jump straight into a complete ROM hack, and oh boy, that was extremely nice of him and extremely needed. We hopped into a Discord call and as I screen shared the training ROM, he was able to give me tips and pointers of what to do and how to do tricks. So I opened up the first stage called the simple jump and- uh, All right, so this level seems like nothing. It's literally called the jump and it's- oh. <laughs> Are you picking up on what I'm about to be dealing with here? Anyway, throughout the session, I learned about getting past chucks, getting past reverse chucks, how to deal with lava plants, what slow and fast fall is, balancing on disco shells, precise swimming mechanics, grabbing and jumping on this block thing at the same time, it's weird shell jumps, you know, the basics. I was steadily getting more familiar with the moves and learning everything, and I'll be honest, I was starting to feel pretty good. You know, kind of getting the hang of it now, bit of a confidence boost. And then I hit the test stages where all the mechanics you learned are packed into like an actual level. Test one wasn't too bad. It looks like this and ended up taking me around 20 minutes to beat. But test two was the one that got me. It's a short, fast paced level with no checkpoints, but uh, between the really difficult button input to do the block grab jump thing, straight into a shell jump, and then land on Tiny Dino Man onto Yoshi, I was... My armpits were sweating. The last trick you gotta do is ditch Yoshi and win. But since I bonked my head or missed the jump so many times, you can, you can see the trauma behind this hesitation here. But I ended up getting it after an hour and a half of attempts. After all that, Ryu says he thinks I'm ready for the real deal, sends over the ROM he recommended, and here's my experience trying to beat my first Mario Kaizo hack, Super Ryu World. This is how the game starts out. <laughs> You're doing great. That's fair. <laughs> so, level one. I'll be honest, pretty straightforward. Jump on a few guys, do some more jumps, choke right in front of the checkpoint. No. Oh. But eventually I was able to beat it, and I'll admit, I was pretty stoked. This is oh, jump oh, suit, oh. yeah. Oh, oh! <laughs> yes! I was worried I wouldn't even be able to pass the first level, and I actually just couldn't make this video because I was too bad, but knowing I can beat at least one, yeah, meant more to me than it should. And the show goes on. Level two was ramping up. You run through and dodge various thwomps and stuff to hit a P-switch, then run back through everything in reverse so you can get into the pipe that was previously unreachable. After many attempts and this, No, let me in! <laughs> I managed to slip my way into the pipe where I met these two friendly guys. I was really caught off guard by cats in Mario game. So caught off guard, in fact, that I just ran into them and died. Checkpoint? Checkpoint? What? What is that? Oh! Yeah! oh. I beat the stage quickly after, so let's not... We're, come on. Next was this really cool escort stage where you nab this Galoomba at the very start and use him to progress through the stage. It was difficult, but I had a really fun time with this one and the atmosphere was really cool. But I guess I was having too much fun because I let my guard down and got real humbled. 
Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> also, the first time I got to that part, I thought the Galumba would turn around and come back. But he didn't, so I just watched him walk off the edge and strand me. Anyway, I had a hunch the checkpoint was right after that pipe, so I knew that if I just got that jump right, I could start making more progress. And after like 30 minutes of trying to get back in there, I finally did. On the bright side, I was completely right about the checkpoint being there. I did not, however, calculate this. So... <gasps> I did it! Oh, you did it! Please, a checkpoint. No! <laughs> I'll be honest, that was a good one. I couldn't even get mad. And it's even more funny when after you get the checkpoint, they'll spawn you right above that pipe continuously. So whenever you start again, you gotta immediately hold hard right. Oh, so yeah, I eventually ended up beating the stage. Now let me tell you about the fourth level. Moles. It was a lot of tricky maneuvers that didn't leave much room for error. Also, I thought the beginning was funny. Oh, okay. Trying to jump on these slippery little freaks was a bit rough. This was hard. This was hard. This was hard. I did this part wrong. I think I needed him. This guy suicided. No, don't do it. Oh. And then it just got worse. The second part of the stage turned into a build a bridge mole escort mission. I'll save you all the pain and agony and just say this level, especially the second half, gave me the most hell compared to the upcoming levels for a while. Even more hell than the level called Jank Heaven. I don't really want to cover every single thing that happened in every single level, but I can give you a little taste of what Jank Heaven was like real quick. Three. <laughs> that Mario sprite. No, shoot! <laughs> uh, that's a jump that's just hard. I think everything I do here is impressive. To some benchmark, what? yes. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like had the awareness, dude. That's like holy sh. Oh. Oh, sh oh. Shoot, this is the last jump. <laughs> So I'm progressing a good amount into the game at this point, but then I get to a ghost house called The Waiting Room. Overall, it was a pretty difficult all-in-one go level with no checkpoint, but the one part that just kept tripping me up throughout the entire stage was this part where you jump onto this wiggler, balance on him until that wall goes back up, jump off, and then whatever, do bomb stuff. I just couldn't do the wiggler part consistently at all. Either I would mistime the jump and pathetically hop off the edge like this, or do this, or this, but it was mainly the pathetic one. I would say probably 80% of my deaths happened on that part specifically, and it technically isn't even the hard part of the level. I really don't think that part was even meant to be that hard at all. But an hour and 30 minutes of doing the same mistakes over and over, just trying my best, I realized there was a much easier and smoother way to do that entire part, and I literally wasted all that time making the whole thing way more difficult than it needed to be. Oh. Nice. That's so much easier. Huge. Oh my god, I can't believe I've been dying to that wiggler that way this whole time, <laughs> and I could just do that. It's probably what's intended as well. You're probably right. Yeah. I mean, once I learned that, I beat the stage 20 minutes later. That was, <laughs> that was awesome. Am I upset? No, not really. I'm an animator that works in Adobe Animate slash Flash. I'm used to throwing away multiple hours of work into the trash. By the way, this happens right in front of the goal. <gasps> ah, okay. Dup, 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 dup. Be cool, be cool, be cool. You f her. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not. Jaden. The stages are getting much more difficult at this point. There's only four worlds in the game, each containing around three or four levels, which growing into it, I didn't know. I thought there was gonna be a full eight worlds and I was starting to sweat in world three. But yeah, Ryu ended up telling me I was in the home stretch and I popped off so hard. I just thought I was bad this whole time. After a few more levels, pain, agony, I made it to the last world and oh my God. World 4, Stage 1. 
was the worst thing this game ever ended up throwing at me. I don't even know how to go into detail with all the tricks and moves you need to do in this stage, but I spent four hours on it, an hour and 40 minutes on the first half, and two hours, 20 minutes on the second. I know Mr. Beast and other content like that has kind of changed people's perceptions on how much is a lot of time in terms of YouTube content. Four hours is nothing compared to, I don't, 24 hours touching a worm, but I sat there making mistake after mistake, learning and adapting and still failing for four hours straight. It was starting to like get to me. Like personally, eventually every time I would mess up, I would feel it in my insecurities. Ah! I have no confidence in my own judgment to make important core decisions. But I did it again, four hours later. Maybe you don't think that's a long time, but I was wallowing in my own personal hell there for a while. So knowing that was the very first level of the last world, I was suddenly very afraid of this game and what it'll do to me. But surprisingly, the other two levels weren't nearly as bad as the first one. I ended up finishing stage two in only an hour and a half and stage three in 30 minutes. That was the, the, the ego boost I needed to regain some strength again, I'll tell you that. Stage three boosts my confidence and stage one keeps me humble. Fair and balanced life if you ask me. Then I realized, I was about to enter the last level. Dude, I'll be honest, I was mad proud of myself. I went from not even knowing if I could build enough skill to beat one level to getting ready to go into the final level of the entire game. Ryu hopped into a call with me to be there for the finale, which basically meant he sits there for an indefinite amount of time watching me fail over and over on mechanics he's already mastered. Like, like watching a toddler struggle to fit the circle block in the square hole. In good old Mario Kaizo fashion, the level starts out with, I'm gonna miss this when I come out victorious. Or just perish on the spot, either way. So I started chipping away at the level, jump on these guys, balance on spiky, do this, do that. I was a little bit nervous because Ryu was watching and I, I wanted to show him how much I've gotten better at Kaizo. You know, like a teacher finally being able to see their student face their final fight to the death battle. Well, like, not just some school teacher, like a, a cool samurai teacher or something. <laughs> I messed it up. Anyway, I was trying to impress him and then I just went and did this and this and this. But he seemed proud of me anyway for just being able to get this far. I was making some good progress on the level. I was about to get to the final checkpoint, but you know. Right no, jump. I knew it. <laughs> Things happen. Even though it was a really hard level, it was still surprisingly a lot of fun. And not nearly as bad as 4-1. I keep bringing it up, but I, you know, it really got to me. But like that, maybe a bit less than three hours later, I got to the final room. It's boss fight time. For a final boss in a Kaizo hack, the fight was actually pretty chill. Not easy, but you chill. These on and off switches control the room going up and down and you gotta get the floor low enough to grab these little blue blocks to throw at the giant King Boo or whatever he's called in this game. But don't let it get too low because then you can die to the lava right beneath there. So you're trying to keep all these things in mind, but to add to the pile, these little flying boogers meander around the stage while you gotta dodge them. And yes, they're RNG based, they're random. You can't just memorize their booger pattern and be on your merry way. Whoa. Okay, the smart way to go about this boss is to stay in the middle and calculate safe times to go to the sides and hit the switches but I was being stubborn and trying to brute force my own way to do it. What a little booger. <laughs> Those guys are- no! <laughs> He punishes you for standing on the edges, you know? I'm gonna stand on this edge. <laughs> You're like, I don't give a shit. I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> In the lava and then crushed. And then, oh, this edge. Oh, as is life. Oh. Okay, Wonderful. I'm gonna stand on this <laughs> other side. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's um, kind of is actually. Except for the guys that come out of the wall and kill you. But it's pretty like... <laughs> I'm gonna die on this hill. <laughs> I didn't know how many times you have to hit Boo. Mario rules always default to three, but it's Kaizo, so it could also very much be a thousand. They know. No! Oh! Ah! oh! <laughs> okay, so now I know you have to hit him 
like, I assume five times. Oh. I'm not gonna spoil how many times you have to hit him. Yeah, so I hit him three times and didn't win, so I was like, all right, must be a thousand. But then a few attempts later, this happened. Huh. Oh snap! So there I it is. I did get him three times, and you then did, I and just then you died. died too quickly. Isn't that awesome? It was three. I just died too soon after that third shot, and it didn't count, which I'm going to choose to ignore. I did it. I learned Kaizo, and I beat Kaizo. And it only took 17 hours, not including training. Are there much more difficult hacks out there? Oh yes, absolutely. Some of them look so disgusting, I don't even want to be in the vicinity of their aura. But I was able to challenge myself and beat one that was really well suited for my skill set going in. And looking back at some of the things I was able to end up pulling off makes me feel very cool. Look at his stuff. I did that. It's cool, come on. I want my hard-earned credit and applause, please. I think my favorite thing about Kaizo is how easy it is to visualize the progression of your skill within every single level. Like, World 3 Stage 3 starts off with a really difficult maneuver that I got hung up on for a while, and then suddenly I'm nailing it almost every single time. You can really feel and see yourself grow within Kaizo, and I don't think you can say that about a lot of things. Does that mean I recommend you try it? Absolutely not. If you get impatient and frustrated easily and are also bad at video games, don't even think about it. But hey, if you think it looks interesting and you can stay calm under extreme circumstances and have around 17 hours to kill, I can't recommend it enough. I liked it. Thanks to Ryu for helping me out and being extremely nice and training me and giving me a great ROM and literally just sitting there watching me struggle for many hours. Go check out his channel. He's very entertaining. I've been watching him for years now. And yeah, that's it. I'm officially very good at video games and I've supplied documented proof. Again, if you haven't gotten your tickets, Scribble Showdown is back on tour. James, Dom, Ross, Aaron, and I are doing a drawn slash improv slash comedy show. And it's, at, sorry, Ari. It's happening in November and December at these cities. I'm not going to say them all because it's a lot. And you should hurry up and get your tickets because I told you so. It's, it's genuinely a lot of fun and we've all been super excited to get back on the road. And I hope to see you there. Mario Kaiso was also a lot of fun. And if I wasn't developing Carpal Tunnel, I would play nonstop. Thanks for watching. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.